Hello. Wait, Wait yeah, I'm recording. <laughs> no. Hi, Carrie. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. So I have everything here. I think people are going to really enjoy going into a little bit of a routine here. And I'm totally just going to let you take the lead on this. Um, so I do want to talk a little bit about what happened because I was like, oh, my God, I, I got so scared for you. Yeah. Um, so it really all happened really, really fast. And, you know, um, I'm glad that you brought this up. Uh, in, um, I think it was just around November 20th, I had discovered it's a little tiny, tiny thing right here in the corner of my nose. Mm -hmm. And I went and I had noticed it a while ago, but then it, it was like, it's like a pearly color and I'm so pale. I kind of would forget about it. Yeah. And anyways, um, I went in to finally get it biopsied and it came back as a basal cell. And one of the things that I really want people to understand about basal cell, and if you go to my story on Instagram, I sort of take you through it. It can be like a pearly color. Um, so especially if you're pale, like me or you, it can go really unnoticed. It was super, super tiny. Um, and it was also like right here in the corner of my nose. So it's not something that you really pay attention mm -hmm. to. And I'm not somebody who, like gets up in the mirror, you know, in my face. So anyways, I got really lucky that I found it. I found an amazing surgeon. Um, he got me in um, actually the day before Thanksgiving. I had to oh, go wow. in for surgery. And even as tiny as it was, I mean, it it was like the size of like, I don't even know, like a, a millimeter. And um, he said it was, quote, huge. And he then proceeded to tell me he didn't know how deep it had gone and if it had gotten into the bone. And so I was really pretty stressed out um, because the way that the cancer grows, it's down or it's, you know, we don't know until they start basically operating oh on you. God. It's a pretty interesting procedure. What they do is they'll, they'll take a little bit of your skin out and then mm -hmm. they put it under a microscope and then they figure out which direction it's going. And then they'll, they'll keep doing that over and over again until they basically get all of it out. So what, until they see like a clean line around so, um, you know, I feel like I got actually really lucky, um, that I discovered it, that I got it checked and that I got in when I got in, it turned out that it was six layers deep. I had, um, an like an incision from here to here. It's still healing. You kind of can't see it now. It's, it's, it's healed really well. Um, and still, it's still got some time left, but, um, but I mean, my biggest lesson to people, especially people with fair skin yeah. is go get your skin checked or get yeah. your skin checked annually. Um, because you don't know what little bumps could be. And, mm -hmm. you know, what triggered it is I actually had a little, um, a little brown spot on my arm and that's what made me think of it. And that was actually, um, a pre melanoma. And the reason I knew that is when it's a little brown, we call it the ABCDEs of skin cancer. So, and I, I noticed it like maybe a year and a half or so ago. Mm -hmm. And then I happened to know, thankfully it was on my arm and yeah. that's what really kind of triggered me to go and get my skin checked because it had started to get a little bigger. And then I remembered about this one. So this one was definitely going to be problematic, but this one was like very serious. Oh my God. And I'm, I'm so happy you're okay though. I mean, I like freaked out when you like show me, I was like, Oh my God. No. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I really like, I, I oh don't God. normally post a lot of personal stuff like that, but I think people really, I, I wanted to do that to share the story to make sure that people go get their skin checked. Um, you know, especially, you know, when you're younger and you just don't think about it and you get your sunburns and you're just like, you know, but it's really important to make sure that you're getting your skin checked and, um, you know, doing it annually. Definitely. Well, speaking of skin, you're okay to use like <laughs> some of the stack, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I want you to just take the lead. Uh, let's do some fun skincare and chit chat. Yeah. Like everything here. I just so, did, like this whole look in this other um, Zoom. So my skin is like, I need to be like turned over. So I'm very excited. So one of the things I think we were say saying we were going to talk about is sort of the winter skincare yes. and, you know, how, um, how people tend to be a little, lot of really dry during the winter mm -hmm. and how you can solve that. Yes. So one of the biggest things that people don't understand about dryness and especially in the winter time is that it's a lack of exfoliation. And in the winter time is the best time to increase your exfoliation, not only because you're more dry, but you're, you know, you're spending more time inside. So removing that outer dead layer of skin is going to instantly relieve the dryness. 
And it's also going to help your products penetrate a lot better. So if you're just putting on moisturizing and serums and slapping that on top of dead skin, it's really not going to relieve anything. So it's really important to exfoliate your skin and then, and then moisturize it and replenish it. Um, I like to exfoliate with dermaplaning and with peels. And that's what we have in our product line. Yes, I do. But I have and, a, um, my stacked bag, which is quite awesome. It fits everywhere. Here. Here. I know. I think. So peels are really great for your skin because they gently exfoliate it. Um, and a lot of people have a misconception about them. They think, um, you know, scrubs are better and they're going to be less, you know, uh, less harmful, but it's really the opposite. Peels are really, really gentle They're Um, especially if you use, you know, a light to medium depth peel, you're not, you don't have to peel to peel. Uh Um, the peeling happens at the cellular level. It's going to speed up your cell turnover and our product line, we have a multi-acid peel. So I love it because it's like a one-stop shop for everybody. It's from light skin to dark skin. If you're struggling with acne, dark spots, fine lines. It's even fine for people with sensitive skin like mine, like eczema and rosacea. Yeah, I think so we spoke can... a little bit about that too, because at first, even I guys was a little, a little bit like, oh my god, because I have psoriasis. But it's not like this burning. It's like it's good. So I'm excited to like do this together. It's awesome. Yeah, um, and then you know, using our dermal cleaning tool, I like to use this once a week. It just sloughs off the dead skin. Um, you can apply the peel after dermal cleaning. We always do that in a professional setting. It kind of amps the exfoliation up um, with our peel. It'll help brighten, kind of um, dislodge your pores and mm-hmm. give you a little um, boost of, of hydration and a nice glow. And then you can start using your serums and your moisturizers and your face oils to really like replenish that hydration in your skin and, and seal it in. So um, did you want to do a demo? Yeah, definitely. I want to go right in. I just literally like took off all my makeup and I, I want to like get ready tonight and just like <laughs> relax my skin down You're ready. here in New York. You're ready to Yeah, here in New yours. York, it's um, 11 degrees. It's like freezing and my skin is like not having it. So um, I actually did this week did not do this because I was like, okay, I want to do this like now to show people like it really it's like a refresh. It makes your skin yeah. feel like reset and perfect. So I'm excited. The nice thing about the peel too, is you can use it, um, you know, a few times a week, you can kind of like figure out your own regimen with it and what works yeah. for you. I tend to like to use it, you know, more often. Um, but you, you know, you can safely use it twice a week, even up to four or five times a week. It's a really gentle, no downtime mm-hmm. peel. So the way that if you were doing a weekly facial, do you want to learn how to dermaplane first? What are you thinking? Um, I think let's do like what we did on the demo before where we just started with kind of like dermaplaning. We did a little bit of peel and then um, the oil, by the way, is incredible. I've been using this. I already have like a little bit of like an emptiness over here because I mix it with my foundation. Yes. To get like a nice glow. It's perfect. Yeah. I mix it with, I use a tinted moisturizer with a little SPF. Um, and that's what I do. And yeah. that's what I have on my skin as well. And I love that. It's just like a nice, natural, glowy, mm-hmm. dewy look. Um, so first you want to always cleanse your face before you do anything. Um, so we've cleansed our faces <laughs> and then I like to, on a weekly basis, dermaplane. Um, dermaplaning, as you know, is, is really great for removing dead skin and peach fuzz. So it's going to instantly smooth your skin. It's going to remove the dead skin. It's going to brighten your skin. It's mm-hmm. going to allow your products to penetrate better. It's going to smooth out fine lines. And it's also going to allow your makeup to go on a lot smoother. So there's tons of benefits. It's safe for everybody except for people that have a lot of pustular acne. So if you have a lot of acne, um, you don't want to use this, but if you have just a pimple or two, you can work around it. Um, but you know, if you're pregnant, this is great as well because a lot of pregnant women, you know, suffer from either dryness or acne and they can't use a lot of ingredients. So, um, when you do do (laughs) um, you want clean, dry skin, you want to make sure you have a good grip on the handle. Um, I like to have my, my index finger sort of at the end of the metal piece. The, the blade has this white plastic bevel piece around it so that you have a 45 degree angle to the skin. You obviously don't want it like that. And that's not going to do anything. And so you always want to like, it's hard to do. You always want your um, hand behind the blade pulling your skin taut 
And you're just going to light gentle feather strokes and you want to keep your blade on your skin mm-hmm. while you're um, moving down. Fur come off. <laughs> and then you can wipe it off with the towel, you know, and then when you resume the treatment, you just always want your hand behind the blade. So if yeah, that's going- one thing that I definitely learned from you. Like whenever I do this now, I'm like, okay, remembering your voice. I'm like behind the blade, behind the blade. Cause you can by yeah. accident, like go like this. And it's like, no girl. Like that. Yeah, because you so. want to, the reason you want it behind the blade, it's so hard, I forgot to get a mirror, is because you want to pull your skin taut so that you don't nick yourself. So if you're, I'm left handed, so I tend to start on my right side and go this way. And then when I come over on this side, I'm going to go this way with it. I should have mm-hmm. grabbed a mirror. And then you're just going to kind of do your whole face. We also have, um, as you know, these little precision blades, which are great to do around your brows and your mm-hmm. nose and your upper and lower lip. I'm just going to see if I have a mirror around here. Um, so yeah, you're just going to continue on to do your whole face. And um, I always recommend doing starting on your cheeks. Um, mm-hmm. It's a flat surface just to get familiar with it. And then once you get um, familiar with it, you're really going to, you know, it's a lot easier to really kind of get into some of the more tricky areas on your face and especially around your jawline. The, the blade is sharp, so mm-hmm. there's no, you know, as you know, you don't need a lot of pressure. No, you're just gonna no, no, no. Light feather strokes, um, and you're going to do your whole face, and you can even do your forehead. Whenever you're doing your forehead, um, you just, you know, don't don't come too far down, because you don't want to obviously chop off your eyebrow. Um, <laughs> I don't want to see any of that. Um, that ever happens in your entire career, where somebody is like... Um, not that I know of, um, we all, I always say be mindful Mm. of your brows, you know, and that's one of the reasons why we actually did this guy too. So you can get a a much closer, um, dermaplaning, you know, right up into your, into your eyebrows. So it really shapes Mm -hmm. it better. You can get underneath. And then the reason I love being able to do the nose, a lot of people that have a lot of pore congestion, um, it really helps to get those blackheads out, especially if you follow up with a peel. Yeah. Um, so, you know, doing your nose, I really do need a mirror. You're just going to kind of get in there. And um, yeah, getting off that dead skin is going to really help with that pore congestion. And um, you can apply the peel. We also have a, a clay mask in our product line, which will help pull out the, um, the blackheads as well and kind of do that detox. So, and, you know, if you're struggling with that, like, you know, in this area or even on your, your chin, um, dermaplaning and removing that dead skin and then doing things to pull it out are going to help it a lot. And then after you dermaplane, you want to apply our peel. So after you dermaplane, it might feel a little spicy um, because you've just removed that dead skin and your peach yeah, so-, so it's normal. Um, you know, it'll last just whatever, 15, 10, 15 seconds. It'll calm down. If you want, you can use our ice roller and quickly calm your skin down with that. But if not, um, just know that it's working. I'm going to go into the peel. Yep. So you can apply it with a fan brush. You can apply it just, you know, with your fingers, you can apply it right on, on your skin. I love, I, I even like to get right underneath my eyes Really, okay. with it because a lot of times people, especially now, you know, your eyes can get a little um, dry right now mm. and it's totally safe to just use a little bit right under here. It's great okay. to do right over your, uh, over your mouth as well. Not your mouth, like the upper lip. Yeah. You, can actually, you, you can't even put it on your, yeah. You know, you should, you know, your neck is part of your face. So, and you know, it's safe to use, um, you know, like I said, several times a week and you can do a couple layers of this too, if you want, if you feel like I didn't get enough, you know, you can go in for another, another layer. The spiciness is setting in. <laughs> I feel good though, right? No, it does. Cause it. it's like, Oh, I haven't done this in like a week. I'm like, Ooh, I'm like refreshed. And then you can just use your roller. If, if it's, doesn't that like it cools it right down, huh? Yeah. It's awesome. This one. I, I think I told you, I carry my bag. <laughs> it's awesome. You know, this thing- it just, it stays, I know it feels really good and it stays cold because it's a, it's just a solid piece of stainless steel. So obviously right out of the freezer, it's really, really nice mm-hmm. and cool. But even, even just sitting on my desk, I leave one sitting on my desk mm-hmm. and you know, it's just, it just feels nice too. Yeah. It's so good. I love it around the eyes. Like just one second holding it. Oh yeah. Awesome deep puff. 
So, um, yeah, let me get some stuff here. The other thing that we should, um, we can do our face, like, like just as a sidebar, Yeah. a lot of times people forget about their body. So we have a body oh, yeah. peel yeah, yeah, and yeah, a body yeah, serum yeah. In, our moist, in our product line. Yeah. Which is really great. So if you're struggling with dryness and itchiness or even like body acne, hyperpigmentation, a body peel is great. You can use it one or two times a week. Um, so don't forget about your body, um, as well. So after you've cleansed and you've exfoliated your skin with dermal cleaning and a peel, um, we want to, we want to get some moisturizer going, right? Some yeah. hydration into our skin. Definitely. So this is our hydrating serum, right? Um, the hyaluronic acid serum. It's got um, a couple different molecular weights. It's got lactic acid in it, which is going to help drive it down awesome. and deeper. And it's also got vitamin B. I'm going to just do this. Yeah, it's just like gliding on because we just like, you know, shake yeah. everything off. And- it, it really does. It just, it really, you know, again, you can get right up in your eyes. You can put it right over your lips if you want. And it just absorbs so nicely into the that skin. Is. I love this one pre-makeup, especially because it's like uh-huh. really, it just it zaps everything you need. Yep. So now we have our HA serum on and you have, do, do you microneedle? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, that's my thought. Get out. out. <laughs> yeah. So after you use your peel, you calm your skin down. You apply the HA serum. Yeah. Now sometimes it, it after you apply the serum, it can kick up the heat a little bit. That's totally normal. Um, it's you know all all serums and products have water. Yeah. And the water sort of can reactivate the peel. So you just want to make sure your skin is calmed down before you start microneedling. Um, but it's perfectly safe. What the microneedling is going to do is two things. They're tiny little needles. Um, they're 0.2 millimeters. They are going to drive the product down and deeper. So it's going to make those active ingredients work a lot harder. And it's also going to help stimulate some collagen to like plump and firm the skin and prevent the signs of aging. So when you microneedle, you always want to like divide your face into four quadrants. Got it. And you're going to roll vertically, horizontally, and diagonally. And I like to go around my face twice and then also do my neck. So you're going to apply as much pressure as you want. I like to go up and down and then pick up the tool and move it because you don't want to be dragging it. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to be dragging it. You can hurt yourself. So vertically, horizontally, and then diagonally. I always love after I use this because it really like sets in that your skin is like, you just got like this mini facial. Yeah. Yeah. And it's normal that you're going to get red. I mean, Mm -hmm. of course, you know, we're both paler, so we're probably going to look a little more red. Um, I don't care. The other, but yeah, it's totally normal. Um, It leaves your skin and it calm. You can use the ice roller to calm it down pretty quick. Um, Or, you know, within 20 minutes, it should be fine. Um, So again, this is really a great treatment for anybody, except for those with active pustular acne, because obviously you don't want to be rolling over acne and spreading bacteria on your face. Yeah. So if you have a pimple or two, totally fine. Um, You can also get right underneath your eyes. So this is really great for people that are suffering from dark um, under eye circles. Uh Um, It'll help uh, stimulate the collagen, which is basically going to thicken the epidermal wall here to conceal. Basically what you're seeing is a pool of blood. It's also good to do. What would you say is the top thing you don't recommend somebody do with tools like this? Because somebody can have an accident, right? Like if they go too harsh or no, not at all. I mean, these are pretty small needles. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't press too hard, like do what's comfortable. You know, mm-hmm. you don't need, you don't need to like, you I know. Some, a lot of some pressure. Like, yeah. I'm just asking yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, kind of, kind of, you can feel what's going to work for your skin. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the biggest thing is making sure you're not dragging it. And the other thing is, is making sure you're changing these heads out. If you're using oh, them yeah. regularly, like we, you know, you can do this day. I would do this a minimum of five times a month and then mm-hmm. swap out the roller heads. So these just pop right off. The reason yeah, you want to make sure that you're replacing this is these needles dull and you don't want to be rolling with a dull needle mm-hmm. and um, same with the blade. You know, you can just pop these off and, yeah, and the replace them monthly. Yeah. And there you have the replacement packs for both blades. So, um, hygienically it's better for, to, to clean these up after you use them. I just keep a, a bottle of, um, regular alcohol, you know, 90% oh, alcohol in a spray oh bottle God. before we, I, I, of course, everything with COVID, just, I'm even more conscious of that. Yeah. And you can, I keep it in a spray bottle. I just spray it, you know, wipe it off and then put the cap back on and, and then store it for the next okay. use. 
Um, you can also knife needle right over your lips. The lips, I think last time felt really good. So let me help find out. Yeah. And then it helps with the fine lines here. And then I always tell people to not forget their neck and it, you can even do your chest too. So, and you just, and so like I said, I like to do um, my face and quadrants. I do mm -hmm. my eyes, my lips and my neck. And then I usually go over it twice. It takes a couple minutes, you know, but that's good I think sometimes. I like to do it like I mean, five. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, skincare should just be between you and the skincare, just like relaxing down and getting like a treatment for you. Um, right. You know, something that always was like curious to me is like, how did you like one day say, you know, I want to create stack skincare. <laughs> um, so I launched this business um, because of my lifelong struggle with eczema. So I've always had um, really bad skin issues and health issues as a result of my skin issues. Um, and so I left my career and actually became an esthetician to figure out how to help myself and others. And so through the process of becoming an esthetician and treating, you know, thousands and thousands of clients, I sort of came up with this methodology of combining different modalities um, and different types of active ingredients. Um, and so combining or stacking. So that's where stack skincare came in. And, um, and so then I figured out that was sort of my aha moment of this is the product line that I'm going to launch. And so I, um, I started designing the tools um, that I knew I wanted in our product line that I wanted to design things that were going to be super high quality and, you know, give you that like at home professional experience. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, started working with the chemist on, on the, on the topical solutions and then figuring out how to combine what with what to achieve the result based on, on this, on the, on the so skin. So it's like a labor of love. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you really spent a lot of time developing this, fostering the idea. And I think a lot of people find that quite inspiring, actually. Do you have um, any advice for people out there, maybe listening, who want to start a skincare company? One thing that you have learned. That definitely oh, wow. changes everything. Um, oh, yeah. I'm putting you there. <laughs> <laughs> I would say, like, the, I don't know, I don't know if it's the one thing that I've learned, but it's, it's definitely, I am so glad I became an esthetician um, and that it comes from a place, the place of expertise and authenticity mm -hmm. and credibility. Um, and I wouldn't have done it any other way. You know, it was really hard because I, it wasn't natural for me. I didn't know that I would be a good esthetician. I knew that I really wanted to go do this to learn. Mm -hmm. And then I really fell in love with it. So I think, um, if for my experience, you know, becoming an expert and really, you know, diving in that way, I think is given, um, you know, given a lot of credibility to us. And it's just been a lot, it's been very, very enjoyable, right? Because it comes from a place of passion and, mm -hmm. and I love helping people. Like when I was treating my clients full time and, you know, I treated a lot of people with severe acne mm -hmm. and just seeing the, like the, the joy in their face several months later when their skin was cleared up. And mm -hmm. I, I know that pain of, you know, being so uncomfortable in your own skin so I think, you know, with skincare in particular, if you wanted to launch your own skincare line, I think it needs to come from a place of, you know, of passion and maybe personal experience as opposed really? to just, you know, wanting to have a product line to have a product line. I mean, I yeah, don't know. I, I think that's really important because so many people, you know, they just launch something and it's like, oh, I have this, but it's like, when you have something that you have your rollers like everywhere, like it's your life, it's what you've created. I think that goes a little deeper. I really do think it does. And I think it also helped me. Well, I don't think it did. It helped me to come up with a unique, you know, brand, you mm -hmm. know, we're not really like any other skincare line. Um, and so I, you know, having gone through that experience and, you know, being an esthetician, it helped give me my, my, my uniqueness, I guess I'll say. So um, let's go on to some hydration. Yeah. I think winter, we need this. <laughs> yeah. So I love this moisturizer. We launched this towards the end of last year. It's got ceramides in it, which are really great for hydration. Mm -hmm. It's also got squalene in it. Um, it's got different, it's got hyaluronic acid in it. It's just got lots of, it's got, a, it's got astaxanthin in it, which is really powerful antioxidant. That's great to protect not only against UV, but the blue light that we're yeah. always, you know, in front, in front of. of now, so. Yeah. So this moisturizer, it just feels so nice. It's it's like, 
it's like a lightweight, but it's still so feels super moisturizing. You know, even somebody like me, who's super, super dry, uh-huh. I still don't like super heavy stuff on my skin. Um, you know, it's like you want something that's going to penetrate and feel hydrating, but yeah, not just definitely. kind of sitting on your I mean, skin. I have um, dry skin too. I like something heavier at night, but I try to do that like maybe twice a week. I don't like that like all the time. So I totally understand what you mean because like if you have like residue of like oil and stuff or like it, it just yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't feel very nice. Yeah. I'm a little red. <laughs> no, you look you pretty honestly. See, like- Okay, genuinely, I thought you were wearing makeup. <laughs> so no, <laughs> no, no, you look good. Yeah, um, my microneedle, I could use a little bit of a, a colder roller. And then we always finish with a face oil. So the the, the steps are always, you want, you want to apply products thin as the thickest. So oil is going to be the thickest. This is a fermented Japanese um, oil. So it's really nice and moisturizing. It absorbs nice. Ooh, it's, it's like not oily, right? Mm-hmm. It's also got um, an active ingredient in it to help with anti-redness. Oh. So if you are struggling with redness, and like you said, I like to I like to combine this with my tinted moisturizer. Oh, yeah. and I'll just, I'll just use that for the day. You know, I like it as an oil because um, it depends on the oil you use. Like I really would never mix a coconut oil, believe it or not, with my foundations. Um, Over time, it just kind of breaks down the makeup. This one in particular is really quite good. Um, The makeup just looks really like hydrated and glowy. So I like that a lot. So I'm going to stop you right there. So coconut oil is literally one of the worst things you can put on your skin, um, especially your face. Your body, it's fine. Coconut oil is... Um, it's called comedogenic. It's going to clog your pores. Yeah. So I know it's been like a TikTok thing or Instagram thing with like people were all the rage with coconut oil, but don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) Use like grapeseed oil or, you know, or our oil. If you want to like, just buy something off the shelf. I love jojoba oil. It's like bioavailable. Hmm? Almond seed for me is actually pretty good. Yep. So anything like that, but no coconut oil. Um, (laughs) No, it's important that you speak up about this stuff because just because something is a trend on TikTok, Instagram, listen, there have been a lot of trends on TikTok that if you read Allure, don't try this. I mean, using a blow dryer to curl your eyelashes, it's insane. I don't even know why. I I haven't seen that one. Yeah, on TikTok. I I was like, (laughs) I don't even go on TikTok anymore to look at things because I'm like, this is false. (laughs) And it's dangerous. Yeah, um, I don't. Yeah, I haven't seen that. That, but um, I have seen a lot, like on some of the DIY stuff, and you're yeah. like baking soda. Don't put baking soda on your face. Baking soda That's is um, some people like think they use it like for a scrub, and um, baking soda is alkaline, which can attract bacteria. So if you have oily and acneic skin, and you're using uh, like a baking soda scrub, you're you're doing it wrong. You can't be serious. People are doing that. Oh my yeah. God. What? Whoa. What is, okay. Besides that, what is the other weirdest trend that you'd like to just debunk since you're qualified to debunk that? <laughs> I mean, that uh, I don't know. I don't, I can't think of a trend. What I can tell you that I'll debunk is dermaplaning does not make your hair grow back thicker or darker. It is literally physiologically impossible. All you're doing is shaving off the dead skin and and the peach fuzz is obviously coming off with it. But some, some women are absolutely convinced that their hair grows back thicker and darker and it doesn't, it doesn't. So that would be the one myth I, you know, determined to to bust. (laughs) I myself was a little nervous at first, but I, I thought to myself before, like Googling it, I was like, well, your hair is like your hair. It's it's not going to grow like this length. So that doesn't make sense. So I, no. I kind of was like, okay, that, yeah. Well, and it's kind of funny because the same people that say that will, will use a wax, which is really painful or even like um, threading, you know? So I don't know why your hair would grow back thicker if you shaved it <laughs> versus if you yeah. plucked it out. But anyways, it doesn't happen. No, I think way. that's really important. I cannot believe about the baking soda though. Oh my God. Yeah. So. Do you think that do you think that social media has made it a little bit difficult um, when it comes to like you're always having to debunk things? I think that 
um, it's become difficult for consumers um, because there's so much like misinformation out there. And it's, you know, I think people are starting to figure out like, you know, who to go to for information, because I think that that's, that's sometimes one of our biggest concerns is, you know, people um, are just sort of, you know, getting information from wherever. And a lot of times it's not accurate. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, people, people listening to professionals or people that know what they talk, you know, what they're talking about is one of the things that I would encourage people and to not just necessarily hop on any bandwagon. Um, because it's your skin, you know, it's different with makeup or fashion. Like you can maybe go and have like fun with that kind of stuff. But, you know, a lot of times people like they'll, they'll see like maybe a a famous influencer and she's got beautiful skin and she talks about what she does, but that's not necessarily what may be right for your skin. One routine doesn't mean like one size fits all. Everybody has a different sort of thing that works. So that's again, very important because kids are impressionable and, you know, even adults to some extent are very impressionable when they go on TikTok. Oh, the new trend. But that's another thing. Just because you see somebody online using a product does not mean it's going to be good for you at all. You got to look into things. Yep. Figure out what, and then figure out, you know, what's right for you. Um, and that's why we, we try to provide a ton of education. We have videos, Mm -hmm. we have blogs, we have free virtual consultations. You know, we'll talk to you about our, obviously our products. And if you have questions about your own skin concerns and, um, you know, we're here to help. So I think that's really like my number one job, right? Obviously we want to sell our skincare products, but we also need to help our customers. People first. Yeah, for sure. So for, for sure. winter skincare, is there anything else that you think is vital for people to know about? Um, there's things that you can do at home. Like what we just talked about, obviously yeah. one exfoliation, you know, then replenishing your skin um, with, with the hydration, um, you know, face oils are great to steal and protect, yeah. but other things like in your home, like, you know, humi- getting a humidifier, if you don't want a humidifier, you can stick a big spaghetti pot on, on the stove. But um and then making sure you're not taking super hot showers, hot water is going to dry your skin out. Um, so those are two things that I would be really mindful in the home. Um, and then obviously, you know, not um, cranking up the heat too high. Yeah. So if you're super dry um, and you have like, you know, not the best heating system in your, in your place, then um, sometimes maybe opt for an extra sweater instead of just blasting heat out. I know I, I do that sometimes just because the heat's just too drying for me. Um, so those are kind of three household tips that you can. This was um, so much fun. I am so <laughs> excited though, to post this because there's like a lot of things jammed into this one video that I think a lot of people will find very helpful. Um, I think I so. people first brand is like, that's a headline people first <laughs> because so many brands it's like oh buy my product but I love how your approach is so genuine and like I could vouch you're very genuine so it's like I love that um thank, thank you so you. much for coming on please keep me updated on this because I I got so nervous for you like oh my god <laughs> yeah I know I think I mean I'm gonna be just fine um I'm looking forward you can't really see it here um but there's still like a little bit of a raised um, scar, but my surgeon has guaranteed me that I will not left with a scar. So laser, um, what and, is that happening about? Um, I think in another month. Okay. Um, right. And then, and then between that and our home care, I'm sure I can, I can solve that. Thank you so much. Thank people. you for hosting me. It was good to see you as always. Yes. Bye. And we'll see you soon.